Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 263. Fire, 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 fire. Your daily dose of inspiration, encouragement, and energy from the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. Prepare to ignite now. This is Entrepreneur on Fire with John Lee Dumas. Entrepreneur on Fire. Fire. Bonjour, Fire Nation. And did you know that Audible.com has an audio library filled with thousands of your favorite titles? Get a free audiobook and 30-day trial today by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash fire. That's audiblepodcast.com slash fire. All in one. We've heard it many times, Fire Nation, but this time it's true. Squarespace offers an all-in-one platform so you can create a beautiful website just like that. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code IDEA. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Dave Jackson. Dave, are you prepared to ignite? In the immortal words of Brian Johnson from ACDC, fire! (laughs) I knew you were going to nail that. Dave has been podcasting since 2005. Yes, Fire Nation, there was such a thing as podcasting back in 2005. And he has helped hundreds of people start successful podcasts through his School of Podcasting website. He has been helping people understand technology for over 25 years. Dave's passion is helping the world find their voice and audience. Wow. Dave, I've given Fire Nation just a little overview, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you. And then tell us about your business. Well, I uh, I live in Ohio near uh, Cleveland. And yeah, I've been teaching people technology for a long time. And uh, basically in the business world, teaching people office and and computers and things of that nature. And um, my other hobbies, like I I play the guitar, which is kind of how I got involved with audio, learning how to run the PA system and things like that. So uh, in uh, 2005, a a friend of mine contacted me and kind of made fun of me. I'd completely missed the MySpace boat. It had come and gone. <laughs> and, and and I had this little newsletter going on for musicians. And that was like my introduction into kind of uh, working online. I had this newsletter that would go out and he said, hey, you know how you missed MySpace? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, don't rub it in. And he goes, okay, I just came back from this big convention. And the word of the day is podcasting. And I remember just searching for it and was like, whoa, what, what, you know, there just wasn't anything, right. you know? So uh, that's when I finally figured out what it was. You know, I was like, wait a minute, this this can take my kind of teaching background and my audio background and that creativity. And, and I just went, oh, this is, you know, it's awesome. So uh, that's that's when I launched the School of Podcasting. It kind of combined all my passions into one. Uh, we're going to dive more into that later in the interview, Dave. But before we do, I'm just going to break off on a little side tangent here, because as somebody that podcasts seven days a week myself, I love when I come across great audio. And I know on my end, I can control the audio. And I definitely have all the equipment to make sure my side of the recording is incredible. However, it's not always the case. It's not always reciprocated because my guests don't always have that understanding of how to create a great audio side. And you are guest number 263, Dave. And I say this, having interviewed Cliff Ravenscraft, Dan Miller, Michael Hyatt, all of whom are great podcasters themselves and have great audio, but this is the best audio I've ever encountered for my guest. Wow. Thank yeah. you very much. Don't tell them. They don't uh, actually Dan <laughs> listens. Dan, if you're listening, I still love you. You're number two. So, Dave, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire Off with a success quote to get that motivational ball rolling. So take it away. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna go kind of this is not your typical quote, because you had said quote or mantra, something that, True. that kind of lives my life by. So I'm gonna go from the book of Jeremiah. We're gonna go biblical on you here. Uh and it's it's a verse that says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And it's the hope and the future that uh, the part that really drives me forward. Wow. Well, I'm really impressed with that for a number of reasons, but take it down to the ground level for us, Dave. How do you actually apply this mantra to your life? Uh, Just the fact that as an entrepreneur, we're all going to have those days when things just do not go the way you want and you want to give up and you want to hang it up. And I just go, okay, hold on. You know, due to my beliefs, uh, there's a big plan out here for me. And if if I just keep moving and if I don't give up, I'm going to get there. 
Wow. I mean, so many entrepreneurs have been successful purely because of that reason. They did not give up. So I love that. And just to make sure we have the record straight, that's Jeremiah 2911, correct? That is correct. Boom. Look at that. <laughs> that's right. Gold star. <laughs> so Dave, let's continue on with the interview. Let's talk about your journey because that's what Entrepreneur on Fire is all about. We spotlight our guests and we talk about their journey, which involves failures and successes and aha moments and pivots and everything in between. So take us down to the ground level. Share with us a story of when you failed or just faced this massive obstacle that you had to overcome and how'd you overcome it? The the biggest one, my first one really, is I was 16, and uh, the high school I went to had this work program if you wanted to, and I was like, wow, this could be cool. I could have a job when I was 16, and and uh, so I went to work in a grocery store yeah. and uh, was there for, for two weeks, and they pulled me in the office and said, uh, Dave, you're, you're a really nice guy. We appreciate all the hard work you're doing, uh, but we're going to let you go. And I, and I was like, what? Because I, I had quit my paper route. I mean, this was a real job. This right. was the grocery store, what, you know. Did you break some eggs or something? What happened? Nothing. And finally, it came out. I went back to the, the teacher at my school that ran that program. And he goes, Dave, um, you're too shy. And I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah. He goes, we need you to, to kind of come out of your shell. For, at the time, he might as well have said, Dave, we need you to grow a third arm. Because I was just <laughs> painfully shy. And uh, so he gave me some advice. My my best friend of the world was the direct opposite. He was Mr. Outgoing, Mr. Just Monkey Hour all the time. And uh, he said, just be like your friend. And I was like, again, I was like, y- you don't understand. That's That guy's crazy. And I'm, you know, I, I can't do that. <laughs> and he looked at me and said, here's what I want you to do. If He goes, just act like him. He goes, if you act the way you want to be, he goes, someday you will be the way you act. Oh, wise words. And I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, just, just pretend you're outgoing. And I'm like, okay. And I gave it a shot. And it was interesting because a month later, he got me another job. At a grocery store. And I came out of my shell and, you know, just over time, you know, what was really uncomfortable at first eventually just became second nature. And now you can't shut me up. So it's, it's a, that was the one <laughs> that just, yeah. So that was one of the very first obstacles that I just remember thinking, oh, how am I ever going to do that? I love that for so many reasons. And one of my really good friends, Derek Halpern, who writes the blog Social Triggers, just came out with a video. He does these one-minute videos every week or so. And the last one was literally just about that, Dave. It was about act as if. If you have a problem speaking in public or complimenting people or whatever it may be, force yourself to do it for 10 straight times, whatever it may be. And then you'll start actually integrating that into your personality naturally. So... Derek has some great examples. I love your example of how you overcame that. And let's use that to continue to move forward in your journey as an entrepreneur because you got over that hump, you learned that you love talking, and you've had some major breakthroughs in other areas. Share with us an aha moment you've had or a time when a light bulb just went off and you said, wow, this is me, this is what I want to do, this resonates with my authentic self. And how'd you turn that moment into success? Well, I had uh, kind of fallen into training. My my background was actually in electronic engineering. I was a copier technician, and somehow I fell into training people how to run copiers, which then fell into me teaching people how to run uh, computers, which led to me training people in the newspaper industry how to run scanners. So it was just training, training all the time, helping people understand technology. And and if I go back to my original story, the guy that said, hey, this this new podcasting thing is is coming down the pike. And I remember I Googled it, and there just wasn't anything. There were literally like... I don't know, two, maybe three pages of, of Google results at the time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and I remember I found this software called Juice, and I, I'm like, what the heck is an RSS feed? And when I finally kind of pieces parted one together, and I uploaded an, an MP3 file, and I saw it come down, it was like this gigantic just smack upside the head that – uh, when I was growing up, I was, I'm a guitar player and I had people say, you know, you should go to California. You could be in a, you know, you could be in a, a hair metal band. And I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm just not good enough. And, you know, different opportunities, opportunities had come along. And this was one that just screamed opportunity. You know, you like to teach people technology. This is something that's going to be huge. Do not miss the opportunity. So that's for me when I was just like, okay, this is, I'm not going to let this train run away. This is not, you know, I missed my space. I'm not missing podcasting. So. <laughs> That to me was the big aha moment that I just went, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I just, I'm going to figure it out. I, at the time, was just, I had learned how to uh, 
do online videos. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'll figure out how to make a membership site. And I really didn't know how I was going to do it. I knew where I wanted to go. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I'm a firm believer that, that life is a a classroom. You know, you kind of have to learn something every day, especially being in training. And, uh, I just was like, well, I guess I'll figure out how to do a membership site and, uh, go from there. So that was the big aha moment. When I, when I saw that MP3 file came down, I went, oh, this <laughs> is going to be huge. I love that you had that moment in time. And that's what's so passionate. Like I literally had that moment in my car when I had run out of podcast and I was like, why aren't people producing more content? Why isn't there a daily podcast? Wow. Light bulb. I can be that person because I love content. I love talking to entrepreneurs. I have this vision. Let's make it happen. So Dave, if you could just really pull out one clear lesson you learned from that whole aha moment experience to share with Fire Nation, what would it be? Just to recognize opportunity when it comes along. I think we sometimes are so busy in the technology in, in some cases or we're, we're focusing on the shiny new object and, uh, you know, opportunity is just standing there right in front of us and we're, we're too busy uh, focusing on other little things. And, and a lot of times you just step back and go, okay, what do I want to do? Or how could I, you know, who's my target audience, things like that. And this just came along and smacked me in the head. And I think the other thing I, w- I would take away from that is, uh, you know, get a group of friends that are kind of in the same, you know, good, good support staff and people that are kind of like-minded because he was another guy that was just getting his feet wet with internet marketing and newsletters and he had a website and things like that. So we kind of chimed in together on, Hey, I found this. Oh, you found this. So if it hadn't been for him, I'm not sure when I would have found out about podcasting. The late great Jim Rohn loved to say you are an average of the five people you spend the most time with. So that's just great, valuable advice to surround yourself with like-minded confidence entrepreneurial minds if that's what you're trying to do. So thank you for sharing that. And, and let's, let's do a little rewind here because you talked about how you were, you were shy when you were younger and you had that challenge and you overcame that and you shared that great story. But let's also pull out one clear lesson you learned from that experience, from that point in your life. A fear of failure, or in that case, a fear of looking stupid. I didn't have a lot of self-confidence and I just found out that, uh, you know, if you make a mistake, it's, you know, it's not the end of the world. And, uh, you know, now, of course, with the teaching background, they're learning opportunities. They're not mistakes. But that was kind of something that I just, you know, you have to fall down on occasion to go, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Right. You always see the kid that falls down. Right. And it's always amazing <laughs> when they look up to see if the parents were watching. Right. So they know if to, to cry or not. But a lot of, you know, it's just <laughs> something so where true. I just, yeah. So I just had to, to kind of figure out that, hey, you know, it's okay if uh, I look a little still, uh, silly or, or, you know, it just, uh, it's okay if you attract maybe a little attention or, hey, and that's where I started to find out that I could make people laugh in some cases, being a little goofy. And uh, I like to make people laugh. I like to make people feel better. So that actually then encouraged me to, to be a little goofy and be a little uh, borderline obnoxious at times. And uh, it just kind of opened up a whole new side of me that I was like, hey, I like this. So. Very cool. Well, listen, you may hate this label I'm about to put on you, but I mean, I am just so into podcasting and knowing that you were doing that from the day one almost back in 2005, I'm going to go ahead and call you the godfather of podcasting (laughs) because my journey as a podcaster was literally in 2009. It wasn't until then I even heard of podcasting. So four years after you started was the first time I even ever heard of it and what it was. And then I just had a couple years of really enjoying listening to podcasts and just being a consumer. Consumer. And it wasn't until the middle of 2012, literally, that I started producing my own podcast. So I am, compared to you, very late to the game. But one thing I would love to talk about right now, bring us back to that 2005. What was it like back then? Like the day the dinosaurs roamed the earth and these podcasts <laughs> became available and you were right there at the cutting, bleeding edge, making things happen. What was it like back then? It was really interesting. The very first New Media Expo, it was like uh, the TV show Cheers. I yeah. remember being in the hotel bar and, you know, CeCe Chapman would walk in. We'd all go, hey, CeCe. And then, uh, you know, another person, would, Dawn and Drew would walk in. Hey, and Michael Butler, who's still going. I think he's the longest running podcast now. And, uh, you know, we're all a buzz because we heard maybe Adam Curry might show up. And it was just really cool because we all – knew each other. There were only, you know, a handful of podcasts at the moment. And uh, we were all, I think the 
thing I love about it and, and still is prevalent is there was no competition. It wasn't like, oh, I want my audience to be bigger than his and this and that. And I'm not going to tell him my secrets. And we all were just like, hey, did you hear this? Oh, there's this new service and there's a new media host out. And oh, wait, this person is great on graphics. And we just shared everything we were doing together because we were blazing a trail. We didn't kind of know where we were going. We know where we wanted to go. But it was just a, a great community of people. And uh, it, it still is. I don't. I have yet to really meet a jerk in podcast podcasting. <laughs> I have to really concur with that because when I started back in June of 2012, I reached out to a fellow podcaster, Jamie Tardy, who runs The Inventual Millionaire, and she had been doing it for a number of years. I had been a listener. I asked her to coach me, to mentor me. She absolutely said yes. For three months, I paid her to be that mentor, and she was. She took me down to my first New Media Expo, which was June of 2012 in New York City, and that's where I met and reached out for the first time to podcasters that I knew, liked, and trust, like Pat Flynn, Derek Halpern, and they said, yes, they would be the first guests on my show, and that was really powerful for me. So when I went back to my little hovel in Maine, and I put my nose to the grindstone to become an expert podcaster in what I call the summer of fire, I had that social proof to really move forward with, and that was so important to me for a lot of reasons, and that's actually one of my I've made a moments. I know we're going to talk about yours later. But six months later, I was speaking at the New Media Expo about podcasting, about the success of Entrepreneur on Fire, which was thrilling to me. But my point of all this is that since I launched Entrepreneur on Fire in September and the success that it's had and the people that I've interviewed and the income that it's generated, I have had so many people who have blatantly just come out and said, John, I love your format. I'm pretty much copying it. Is that okay? And I'm Honestly, 100% of the time, like, yes, absolutely. I think it's a great format, and I am honored that you're copying it on a lot of levels. And if you need a guest, let me know. So now I'm on like six to 10 other podcasts every week with other people who are starting their shows, and I'm happy to give back because people gave to me when I started. So that community still does exist, Dave. I'm happy to report I also have not met a jerk in podcasting. Yeah, I do a uh, a podcast about every other week with, uh, for lack of a better phrase, my competition. Yeah. Uh, Ray Ortega from the Podcaster Studio and, and Daniel J. Lewis from the Audacity to Podcast. Totally Both great guys. And, uh, you know, we've just kind of embraced each other. And we realize, if you think about it, if you watch the news, you know, there's, let's say you're in the U.S., there's ABC, NBC, and CBS. Let's say there are just those three. You're going to pick one, and you're probably going to like somebody better than the other but that doesn't mean that we should only have one channel of news. So somebody may think, well, ah, that Dave guy is a little too goofy. I'm going to go over to Ray because he seems a little more straight and to the point. And, and that's completely fine as long as you're learning how to podcast. That, that's <laughs> my whole thing. So uh, I've never uh, – I, I, to me, the fact that somebody would want to do something just like yours – Go right ahead because there's a lot of listeners, plenty of listeners for us. That's the beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, as you rise to the top, you bring everybody up to the top. You know, the, it's, I forget what that analogy is where the boat rises and, and we oh, all. Oh, and high tide all boats yeah, rise. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you, you're the epitome of the Abraham Lincoln quote. I don't know if you ever heard this one where he says, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe. Right. Because you sharpened your axe razor sharp and then came in swinging. It's a great analogy. I never even thought of that quote for Entrepreneur on Fire. But yeah, I spent three months just really perfecting all of my systems, getting 40 interviews in the queue, Dave. So when I launched, I was not going to miss that consistency of that daily podcast. And now, yeah, you're number 263 and it's continuing to grow by one every single day that we go forward. And it's just been absolutely phenomenal. It's been a passion of mine 100% from, from day one till now. And Dave, I, I want to turn the tables back on you, though. Have you had an <laughs> I've made it moment? You know, I've had I was thinking about that question because I, I went back and listened to your podcast. I've, I've listened to like probably 20 today. Whoa. <laughs> and, uh, on double it, speed, I hope. I'm going to say it's really weird because you sound drunk because you're really slow right now. Right. Used to hearing it. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I, I mean, it's so true. I only listen to podcasts on double speed. But in terms of I've made it, I've had a couple, not so much like where I've made it where I'm, I'm, I can just retire or whatever, but just things where it's like, why did I start this podcast? I, I do a podcast about weight loss. And when I had somebody email me, they said, Dave, thanks to your podcast, you told me not to worry about how much weight I had to lose. Um, don't worry about just just lose 10 pounds. If you can do that, do that 10 times. And this person did. And she lost 100 pounds. Wow. And she said, thanks to you. 
you've inspired me to do it. And I, it literally about knocked me out of my chair. I was like, really? Because it's just me talking into a microphone. It's just little old me. So anytime I have somebody uh, from the School of Podcasting who launches a podcast and they, they say, Dave, I'm in New and Noteworthy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, and I had one guy explain to me how he had – rebuilt a relationship with his father through his podcast. Well, how do you put a, you know, dollar sign on that? That's priceless. priceless. You know, so when I hear people and how their lives are, uh, they're getting benefits from podcasting, whether it be from, you know, uh, they're being asked to speak places or money or they're selling more product or whatever. It just somehow their lives, they feel have improved. And they look at me and say, it's because of you. That's when I kind of go, that's what I'm in this for. Okay, good. And it, that's, those days when you're having a bad day and you get one of those emails, you're like, okay, you know, life is, life yeah. is good. So. so true. And I couldn't be more in agreement with you about the future of podcasting too and that intimate connection, how you can just establish authority in a subject or a topic so quickly and really connect with people because you're literally inside their head with the headphones or coming through their car speakers. I mean, you're right there with them at the gym, wherever they're listening, consuming that content. And amazing stats are out there. I mean, iTunes is getting 45 million views a month around the world and growing. Stitcher Radio signing deals with all the car companies to go into the dashboard in 2014 and beyond. Just like you have Sirius XM Radio, you're going to be able to turn to the school of podcasting on your dashboard. I mean, that's going to be an ultimate game changer. And the people who are here right now building those audiences, building this authority... It's going back to that quote that you use that I love, all boats rise in high tide. It's just a great feeling to be part of this in this community that we are creating. So Dave, I really want to move forward now into your current business because you do have a lot of exciting things going on. You have the School of Podcasting. You have your weight loss podcast. You have amazing audio quality right now here today, which I love. Share with Fire Nation one thing that's really exciting you right now. I would say the fact that the the tide is rising, you know, with the new uh, podcast app on smartphones. Uh, I know uh, Libsyn, a media host, just said that uh, 53 percent of downloads now are going directly to some sort of portable device, be it an iPad, an iPhone, things like that. So we're kind of radio is never going to go away, but it's becoming easier and easier and easier to consume podcasts. So that's one thing that just has me super excited because it's, it's like being on the top of that, uh, you know, in 2009 when iTunes came out, that was like the first hill of a, a roller coaster and, and we've kind of come down and, and you go back up and you're, you're right at the top of that second hill and you're ready for the wind to catch in the, in the, in the hair, hair again and we're going to go and it's going to be great and I'm sure there'll be ups and downs and ups and downs. Oh, but yeah. I'm really excited about that. And then uh, in terms of my business, I'm getting ready to uh, – I do personal consulting. I have the School of Podcasting, which is a membership site, and I want to bridge – the the uh, edges of that. I mean, one is kind of self paced, and one is where I actually hold your hand through the whole process. And I've uh, I have how to podcast dot com is I'm calling it group coaching, where basically if somebody that like mm, maybe the one on one consulting is maybe just a little bit out of their budget, and but they still want that personalized attention, then uh, probably in I'm going to say in July I'm going to launch how to podcast dot com, which will be where you can come in and within a month we're going to meet every Saturday and just go through all the steps to. Uh, launch your successful podcast. Wow. Well, you have a lot of great things happening and I just get chills on the back of my neck when I hear you, the godfather of podcasting, talking about this next dip that we're about to take in a good way. We're on top of that mountain about to hold on tight for this wild and fast and scary ride and absolutely there's going to be ups and downs figuratively and literally in the podcasting world. We're facing some challenges right now with podcasting trolls that are going on. We don't even want to get into that now, but I mean, <laughs> it's out there and that's a whole can of worms. And there's just a lot of things going on that are going to make a very interesting next couple of years. But you know, the important thing is that we're all banding together and we're all doing a lot of great things. And it seems like a lot of People in places that matter, like iTunes management, like Stitcher Radio. I had Noah Shannock, the CEO from Stitcher, on my show. And just hearing him and his passion for what he's doing over there to bring podcasting to the world is so exciting to have him on our side. Tons of great things. And Dave, if you can just share very quickly your vision for the future, what would it be? I, I just picture, you know, someday, I don't know, listening to a podcast on your watch. I just think they're <laughs> just going to be everywhere. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, they're going to be in cars. It's going to be, I just think it's going to be something where 
whatever you buy, I, to me, if we go back to the 80s, right, a boom box or something boom like that, but wh- whatever it is, that it's just instead of, instead of AM, FM, CD, you know, it's just going to be, you know, tuned to the Internet here and it'll be streaming. Who knows what it's going to be? But I just think we're all going to be content producers and anybody will be able to jump in and you'll be competing with the, uh, you know, the Disney's and the uh, all the big networks and things like that. And there are people now. Well, you are. I mean, come on, you're beating networks, you know, big, big networks, and you're beating them in the business category. And I think that's the beautiful thing. Uh, David and Goliath. And in the end, content is, is king. And the great it. thing about being a solo entre- entrepreneur, you can move. You, we are quick and we are fast. Agile, baby. Yeah, because we don't have to go through 37, you know, committees and all that other stuff. So we can uh, swim with the tide. Oh, it's so true. And just to see how sponsors are just really realizing the power of podcasting. And my sponsors, to a T, all six of them, literally, it's like they got together and decided at once, but they're all different entities. But they all said, John, here are the talking points. You have the trust of your audience. We want you to speak in your own words about Audible, about LegalZoom, about 99designs. All six of my sponsors said these things. So I come up with my own scripts for my sponsors and they pay a pretty nice price tag, again, because it's just me. What is a good price tag for me might not be great for Wall Street Journal because they have all that overhead, but I get more downloads than they do. I have a higher ranking than they do. And so these sponsors are coming after me to the tune of over five figures a month and growing as my audience grows. So it's just incredible the value that as podcasting grows in popularity and everybody's realizing what kind of audience. It's a different kind of audience that you're culminating to. It's so powerful. But man, we could both get carried away, Dave, because we're so <laughs> passionate about this. But let's take just a quick second to thank our sponsors. Fire Nation, I have an exciting resource to share with you today, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that allows you to easily build your own website just the way you want it. Squarespace has a killer design library, and they are constantly updating their platform, so you have the latest features at your fingertips. Squarespace just recently added an e-commerce to the list so you can set up shop and start selling your products quickly and easily. They've also added a user-friendly calendar feature so you can share your business's schedule right on your website. So whether you have an upcoming speaking event that you want to share with your audience or a new product or service launching soon, Squarespace's events collection calendar feature has you covered. Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. And for a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code IDEA. And before we dive into the lightning round, we want to thank Audible, who's a leader in offering premium digital audio entertainment the entire family can enjoy. At audible.com, you can choose from thousands of titles in multiple genres, ensuring every member of your family, both young and old, can find their favorites to listen to. Purchase individual audiobooks or sign up for the Audible Listener Program to receive book credits each month for one low monthly fee. Once you download your favorite audiobooks, it's easy to listen to them anywhere, anytime. Access them on your computer, burn onto CDs, or upload them to your iPod or any MP3 device for easy, on-the-go listening. Audible.com and Entrepreneur on Fire would like to thank you for listening to today's episode by offering you this. Get a free audiobook and 30-day trial today by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash fire. That's audiblepodcast.com slash fire. We need to move into the lightning round. It's my right. favorite part of the show, Dave. I know you know that because you listened to 20 episodes today <laughs> on double speed. So, wow, this is where I get to ask you a series of questions and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Mind-blowing answers are ready to uh, release. <laughs> what was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? A self-esteem. Boom. Just didn't think I had it in me. Yeah, well, you obviously did. Yeah. What's the best advice you've ever received? I had to think about those. Probably under promise and over deliver. Mm. Because that's kind of my mantra. I when I when I have somebody say, Dave, you really need to be charging more, I feel like I've done my job. Set expectations. You have control to set those expectations. So if you set expectations at one level and you know you're gonna deliver at another, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. What's something that's working for you, Dave, right now? 
right now in in this year, I kind of stepped back and was like, how am I going to build my audience? And I kind of like we were talking before we hit record, personalized interactions. I'm building my audience one person at a time. Totally. And it was just a case where, you know, when it boils down to it, that's how you do it. You know, yeah, it's it's nice if you can get in front of a, a large audience like yours, but in the end, I'm really going to build my audience one person at a time. So I'm meeting every person that signs up at the School of Podcasting and making that connection. And uh, it's funny. It's one of those things you hear it over and over and over. And the reason people say that is uh, it's true. <laughs> I so. could not agree more that. And we did talk also earlier about Fire Nation Elite, the mastermind that I'm growing. And it's so important to me. And I agree with you so much about that, that this mastermind community that I'm creating here at Entrepreneur on Fire, I'm having 15 minute one on one chats with every single applicant because I want to hear their story. I want them to hear my passion. And that's how you grow real fans. It's not that person that has 200,000 email subscribers, but then they have like a 0.01% open rate. No, it's about Dave Jackson who has an audience of a couple thousand, but that every single person tunes in and hangs on to every single word. That's the power. Exactly. What what can I do to inspire word of mouth? Basically, is what it boils down to. Love that. Do you have an internet resource, Dave, like an Evernote that you're just in love with? That you can share with our listeners. I just started using it, and it's free. It's I'm not sure even how to pronounce it. I believe it's Asana. A S A N A. The great thing about it is it's web based, and they've got. I know I have a iPhone, so they have a smartphone that ties into the website. And it's project management, but it can be used for so much more. And the thing I love about it is a lot of project management. It's like, what'd you do today? Well, I put in what I did. Yeah. You know, it's, that's, and this is really super simple. And uh, like I said, it, you can, it syncs with your iPhone, so it's super easy. And you can actually add your clients. In my case, if I'm doing consulting, I can say, here's where we're going to go. Here's step A, B, and C. And they can log into the website and see the uh, project that we're working on and how it's free. Uh, there is a, a, a premium version, but I forget – how big you have to be that you need that. And Quite at this big. point, yeah, at this point, it's it's nothing near where what I'm doing. So yeah. I love it. I'm a huge Asana fan. It does not get recommended nearly enough on Entrepreneur on Fire. So thank you for bringing that back to this section. Facebook employee, like number 68 or something, is the founder of this. So this guy, you know, just has oodles of stock options coming out of everywhere. And he decided, you know what? I am just going to build a passionate, large, loyal audience by providing an incredible product for free. And that's exactly what he's doing. Now he's getting people that are integrating into Asana on such a large level so that down the line, when he does turn that income stream on at a very reasonable level, people are happily going to pay it because they're honored by what he's provided thus far. Absolutely. So Fire Nation, you can find the links to this resource and everything else that we've mentioned in today's episode by going to entrepreneuronfire.com slash David Jackson. So Dave, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? I hate this question because you said one book. I know. Um, Think of poor Fire Nation though. They get seven of these recommendations a week. I'm going to go with because I'm sure they've heard Platform. Yep. So I'm going I'm, I'm to go with one they may not have heard, and it's really good. Writing Riches by Ray Edwards. If you're looking for, I need to, to do some copywriting, uh, Ray Edwards, is it's just super plain, and he explains why this works and how it works, and uh, it's, it's a really great book. Great stuff. Well, Fire Nation loves audio, Dave, and they can get the audio version of this book for free by going to eofirebook.com. It's a gift from Audible for Entrepreneur on Fire listeners, eofirebook.com. So, Dave, this next question is my favorite. It's kind of tricky, so take your time, digest it, and come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Okay, number one, uh, I'm obviously going to start a website. I'll probably buy a microphone so I can do my podcast. And I'm assuming I have clothes on. <laughs> you do have clothes on. But let's, let's share exactly the microphone that you're talking in, which is amazing right now, and the cost. It's the Audio-Technica 2100 USB. It is the microphone that I recommend. And I want to say, the last time I looked, I think it's 34 bucks. $34, Fire Nation. So if you ever are an entrepreneur on fire, you better go spend 34 bucks, And you can expect this incredible quality. Continue. And so I would do that. So I, I'm going to spend some money on a website and web hosting and my that. And then because I've got 
uh, room and board, and I've got food, I'm good to go. So I'm going to find out who the poorest people are, and whatever I got left, they're going to get the remainder. Love that. I mean, that's just simple, as to the point, as actionable. And Dave, I have loved hearing all about podcasting from the godfather of podcasting himself, Dave Jackson. So go ahead and give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance. Share how we can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. Yeah, you can find me. My website is schoolofpodcasting.com. And I guess my parting words would be, don't get hung up on perfection. Yeah, we want to be as good as we can get. And I always tell people, if you aim at perfection and you miss, you're going to land on really, really good. And I see so many people that do not pull the trigger because they're like, well, I really wanted this. And then, you know, I was going to, and that, and if I can just get this, it's like, no, no, just pull the trigger. Because no matter if we, if we take this back to podcasting, when I listen to my very first episode, I just cringe because (laughs) that was whatever, 360 episodes ago. And I'm a little better at it now than I was then. So it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to get better. So aim it perfect. And if you miss, you'll land on really, really good. (laughs) And Fire Nation, if you want to hear someone that totally missed the mark on perfection for his first 50 episodes, just go to Entrepreneur on Fire. My first 50 are not good. I cringe just thinking about them, let alone listening to them. So Fire Nation, you know you can get the links to everything that we've talked about. Entrepreneuronfire.com slash David Jackson. Dave, thank you for being so generous with your time, expertise, and your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, John. This has been awesome. 100% support, monthly webinars, giveaways, an annual meetup, a private forum, private email access to me, your success stories being highlighted on Entrepreneur on Fire. These are all the things you'll get when you join Fire Nation Elite, a tribe of like-minded individuals who have banded together to form a powerful community. Speaking from experience, this type of community is priceless. Find out for yourself by applying at firenationelite.com and schedule your 15-minute chat with me today. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite!